are better than sort of these these uh, monolithic accounts, especially when it comes to ethnic conflicts. But that's going way, way, way off uh, off topic. So that's the, that's the um, nation-based theoretical uh, goal, and it, I think it's a, a very admirable goal. There's a problem, however, right? So let's look at the problem that this goal faces. The problem that we have in this process of nation-based um, theoretical identification is that it devolves into crude and retro forms of cultural nationalism, and, for, and this is a quote, informed by more mysticism than by social analysis, right? Um, what we end up having is, uh, as I said, cultural nationalism. We end up having individuals who vie for political power after colonial masters have left. They gain political power, and they use that power to the advantage of their own community, to their own ethnic base, to their own uh, collective identity, and all other individuals outside of that identity, that tribe, that group, that I, you know, ethnic identity, um, are 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 left to suffer um, on their own, right? So there becomes this 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 process of decolonization isn't as simple as it sounds. It's easy for me to draw a blue dot on the board and then you know see the blue dot going outside. But as uh, Bob Marley said, uh, emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. We have to assume the responsibility of literally decolonizing um, ourselves of, of uh, the enslavement that we, were, that we were indoctrinated in. Okay. So, in, uh, so that concludes the, the, um, the discourse on, and I erase that, that concludes the discourse on uh, the, the first part, right? And the first thing to recognize, the main thing there, was the idea of origins and the reductionist's account, right? The, redu the reductions, reductionist account being um, ethnic-based, class-based, nation-based, right? Which are improvements, which are huge improvements over just, just race as such, right? Race as biological fact. Race as biological fact fact evolved into, and I actually want to draw this out, so we have sort of, well, let me put this back up section. So we have uh, race as biological fact, which was introduced, then that um, shifts, right, we recognize all of the complications that arise with race as biological fact, and we shift um, in the new age to ethnic ethnic-based, class-based, and uh, nation-based identities, right? So we go from racist biological fact to uh, sort of a divided camp. Some sociologists, theoreticians, so on, saying that we can talk about ethnic identity rather than racial identity, class identity rather than race identity, nation identity rather than race identity. Um, what we end up doing is we still have a problem that we have to account for. And that problem was uh, what I addressed at the beginning of the lecture, right? Why is it that there is such a disproportional amount um, within the incarceration rates that the minority in the population represent the majority incarcerated? And as I said, the argument and the account is an objective account. So there is a sense in which um, the individual put him or herself in that position, right? So there is justification in that account that individuals choose not to follow the rules and find themselves incarcerated. There's also the argument that the system is constructed in such a manner that the system um, seeks to incarcerate at higher numbers those who are um, of minority status, right? And the example that I said in earlier videos was uh, an obvious example of the, um, the unfair distribution of sentencing when it comes to crack versus cocaine possession and use, right, and distribution. Obviously, higher number, higher time uh, associated with incarceration rates for crack cocaine as opposed to powdered cocaine, and we talked about that. So that's just sort of, uh, that's a preliminary account. What we want to do now is we want to move um, to specifically um, West discourse, and now I'm going to try and tie in what West has done um, in his account of race matters with Winnett's account, right? In Winnett, we see that we, we talk about the origin of race within um, biology. We shift to 
a discourse on um, reductionist attempts to describe it. And what race, uh, what uh, what, um, what Cornell West does is he talks about the nihilism, right? The nihilism, however you pronounce it, the nihilism within the black community, right? And I think he needs to be applauded for his frankness, right? And he says that there is uh, a nihilism within the African American community. Um, and specifically, I want to use nihilism in the way that um, Wes is using it. Uh, later in subsequent videos, I'll go through sort of a, a methodical account of um, you know, Nietzschean nihilism, maybe even, uh, I mean, Schopenhauer gets into this account as well, but Wes used nihilism in a very specific way, so let's use it the way he's using it. He says, by nihilism, he's talking of the lived experience of coping, this is a quote, the lived experience of coping with a life of horrifying meaninglessness, hopelessness, and most important, lovelessness, right? Um, so when we're talking about nihilism for Wes, we're talking about um, a sense of coping. This idea of coping is very, very important. Before we actually get into the analytic uh, discourse and the attempt to deconstruct the significance of nihilism within the black community, if you were to say generally to a five-year-old, or maybe a ten-year-old, who understands the idea of coping with something, what does it mean to cope? If we're coping with something, we assume, in so far as we're talking about coping, that there is an outside um, temptation, a threat, an outside desire, an outside impediment. There's something there that exists and will always exist. Despite the existence of that thing, that external force, there is a sense in which I still need to maintain my identity despite this threat. Right, so coping is a recognition that there's always going to be this, in a sense, omnipresent threat. Right, so I'm coping with um, uh, my identity. Um, and not only my identity, my identity in the midst of meaninglessness, hopelessness, lovelessness. Right? We feel, as we showed you before, as I showed you before, if we're talking about normative, if we're talking about normative whiteness here, and we're talking about the social structure, then um, the AFA community is down here. Right? And then further down we have, you know, the subaltern community. Right? At this level, what, we, what we're recognizing, as I said before, if we say that identity is defined, right, personhood is defined by um, normative whiteness, right? If we're saying that this is what it means to be a person, right? Then we recognize that as we decrease, as we go down this ladder, the structure, we arrive at a place where we are dehumanizing. We are dehumanizing the individual until we reach at a part where there is, you know, the non-existence of a human, right? And that this becomes the African American community that becomes the the they, right? They become the they. Okay, so we we are um, West says that we are attempting to explain the coping mechanisms within the African American community, um, and this rings this rings home when he, when he, when he writes. You know, I can I can feel as Pac would say, I can feel your pain. <laughs> um, two problems facing the African American community. So let's look at these problems, right? All right. The first is what Wes says is structural, and we will need to identify what this structural or systemic. Right. What is this complication within the African American community? Well, we have for Wes discrimination. We have discrimination. Historical effects of slavery, um, employment, and education. I'm not going to write all of them down, but discrimination, historical effects of slavery, and employment, education. Right? These structural, systemic problems. In a sense, you can think of this um, in uh, sort of Johann Galtung's concept of uh, 
of structural violence, right? The system.